With every new subscriber and even the haters, but especially the people who like this, it's inspiring me to really try some different things and it's legitimizing this as a little bit of an art form for me and like a little project that I can definitely see myself dedicating some time to. And so I'm coming up with all these different ideas and different kinds of styles of making videos and this is going to be one on Lyon. And I'm not going to deal too much in exact history and getting um, like all the information about all these monuments and stuff. I really just kind kind of want to think and talk about the difference between these realities that existed back in this time and the ones that we're going through now. They just seem so different that it really, it seems like we're missing something amazing. And when you connect it with the art and all the other stuff, it really, it leads towards something more beautiful that I don't think we get. So these are the book covers. And uh, some of the stuff in Wikipedia talks about Colonia Copia Claudia Augusta Lugdunum, which was the name for Leon back in the day. And this is a, it says that this city is back in prehistoric times. This dates way before anything that we know. So therefore, we don't know who its true inhabitants were and what was originally here first. But a lot of the history comes from like the year like 40 BC and like right around that time of zero. And it's very interesting and things, this became like a very big city because it's a location by the rivers, it's kind of in the center of France a little bit, it's got, it just became a political power, it's got great hills, you can make forts, they have definitely star forts and all different kinds of amazing basilicas and different monuments there. And this is a relief, relief map from the 1800s that I kind of superimposed onto one of the Google images of the same area. And you can see what, uh, and it's exactly the same. It's almost as if they had Google Earth back then. They nailed it. And all the elevations, everything's just perfect. And it's almost like from a height of about, I believe it was like a couple thousand feet or something. And uh, this is just a very kind of interesting comparison showing, um, you know, and some of the monuments that were on that map are these. They're now, you can see the Star Forts remaining today. This was a police station in Lyon and that's it from above. And that was on that map from back in the day where there's barely anything else, that relief map. And this was another one, another one of the Starford areas. I'm not sure what this was today, maybe a university or something, some kind of park area, but clearly gigantic walls, clearly a Starford foundation formation. And this was another one of the churches that was on that map as well. It was just like kind of a little mark, but this is, it's in this exact place. And it was easy to tell all the roads, all the bridges were still exactly the same. Same number of bridges across the river as there are today. Same number of major roads, like one of them was a railroad now that cuts north to south. And France was known as Gaul for a very long time, and so I'm not sure exactly which theater this is, but around 10 BC, things started getting really popular in Lyon, and the oldest theater in the Three Gauls, which had about 4,500 seats, was opened in Lyon between 16 and 14 BC by a decree of Augustus. The theater was later expanded under Hadrian to include 10,700 seats. In 19 AD, the amphitheater of the Three Gauls was inaugurated, and later enlarged circa 130 to 136. Now this is amazing, it's just right in the middle of modern France and there is a big difference here in these theaters. They love these theaters and they had these great monuments around it. Like I can't imagine this seems a little washed off now or maybe been like just manipulated a little bit over time and it's just, it seems like it would have been incredible, probably covered with gold and different things back in the day. And this is ridiculous because of how close the modern buildings are to these ancient structures and like what are these these arches they're everywhere just like an obsession with arches and they seem to be like filled behind them so I don't understand like are they tunnels were they homes were they something different but they're always just like these really arches that are just kind of there and I know some are used for structural purposes but these are really close and they, these walls and this you know this is like an ancient prehistoric city right on top of um, surrounded by a modern metropolis and this masterful building is the Basilica of Notre Dame de Fauviers, a sanctuary dating from the time of St. Pothinus on the site of a temple of Venus. In 1643, the people of Lyons consecrated themselves to Notre Dame and pledged themselves to a solemn procession on 8th September of each year. The new basilica was then consecrated in 1896, so it's been through some changes. But on the site of a temple of Venus, what does that even mean? 
I do feel there to be some mystery behind the construction of these unbelievable basilicas and churches that seem like they're from like another dimension or something. They're t so totally different and their design is so uniquely like a machine of some sort that they have to have had some other purpose besides just places of worship. And I really wonder around the time of Augustus in the BC era, like when this town was founded and started to be basically come around, what they were seeing. It, were any of these relics still there? Were any of these churches or different roads already here? Any of these hillside temples? Was any part of them already here that they just kind of claimed in like almost like a structure, like this innate structure that was here a long time before them? They might, they seem to be going through the same thing that we are now as in questioning who was here before and all this stuff it seems to be a never-ending process of humanity because there always seems to be this ancient relic that expresses something totally different that just doesn't seem like it can be described in a few sentences online or in, in even some books it, it, it seems like there's something that has been missing or I mean the arches their use of everything here Everything is just kind of flows, everything is really beautiful, and these buildings are just so unnecessary. Like you go around, the, I was looking at the, some of the churches on Google Earth in Lyon today, and they're just like little houses. Like nobody even comes close to being able to donate enough to build any of these in our lifetime. I mean, some of them are kind of godly and uh, whatever, but a lot of them are made out of wood. They're never anything as elaborate as these with just treasures all over the place and organs that are absolutely masterful. And I do believe that they were healing places, maybe even hospitals of some form back in the day. And their technology, you know, was just uh, was something that we can't really grasp. And whether it was the ether that they were tapping into or just sound, different types of frequencies, another just wavelength of some spectrum out there that we're not sure of, or maybe they were just really believing in things and seeing things more. And you know, all this Renaissance art of these time periods shows just angels, really strong people like floating around, like doing things, people with wings, godly moments, like very expressive things. And these were again, masterpiece drawings that people were illustrating these themes. I mean, there's also a lot of talk in different ancient civilizations, the Greeks, the Egyptians, about the use of hallucinogenics and sacred mushrooms and different kinds of uh, wild lotus or different substances to enter these different dimensions. And maybe that, you know, maybe that's what handed out. Maybe the whole, our holy water is a remnant of what they used to use. And they'd have places like this that, you know, temples of of psychedelic worship w would maybe happen. And then, they, so they maybe they were existing in. A, a um, psychedelic -y realm and the other dimensions of thought that are opened by those entheogens and it was allowing them to kind of grasp these things and, re and maybe see visions of how to do certain things because like ancient tribes and shamans all have learned from those medicines of how to create different things so maybe that's inevitably how these brilliance came about or otherwise really there I really always suspect there being a more intelligent being in the past whether it's just more intelligent or stronger or both, like uh, is something, you know, these buildings, this is a very long building and that, you know, all these tops, all of them have amazing tops. They're antennas of some sort, whether they, they do something, there's no doubt about it. You just wouldn't go through that. You just keep that building perfectly flat and forget about the use of a tower. There's no observatory on it. It had to have been something else. In these fortresses, they always had fortresses like as if the place, our earth was flooding a lot or as if it really was just kind of continuously building up. Like I, I can't get stop thinking about some of that because there's some images and artwork and thought about uh, the catacombs of all these places in France. Lyon, I believe, has some catacombs and that's where these tunnels could all lead. There could be just in these hills, could be tons of different places, subterranean worlds that we don't know about. And these are the barriers that keep the water out, keep everything regulated. And they talk about the pyramids as having those phosphorescent lights that don't need candles, don't need mirrors. And uh, I believe that that was probably a known thing throughout time. And what would you find if you were to travel through these tunnels and blast through some of these things? Like, you never know if there's more relics all over the place. When we explore Mayan civilizations and different things, people are just seeing hills on Google and then people are going in and being like finding temples. 
These things exist everywhere in America, all over the place, and they're telling about something that we just, we're not sure of. So if anyone out there is from Lyon, please chime in. I'd love to hear about this place and any of your thoughts from living here because I'm, if I lived around here, I would not be able to stop looking at this stuff. I'd be obsessed as a young kid, like exploring all these woods, looking for extra treasure, like digging things. I can't even imagine what me and my friends would do if we were around that stuff. But their use of aqueducts and buildings and roadways, like these were legitimate highways and still are today. And these walls are massive. They have just so many arches. It looks like so many tunnels. It looks like there was just like a, a whole world, like the mountain was their building. And that might have been the case back in the day, like when people figure out how to dig, dig quick, like blasting with water, blasting with steam, hydraulics. You can blast through areas pretty quick. And really, how old are these things? I mean, we know how old some of the churches are, kind of. But, like, how old are these walls? How old are these buildings, these tunnels, these passageways, that island? These things uh, could be so old that it's unbelievable. Like, what was, you know, when people initially came here, they may have seen an already, like, a, something, a civilization that had been wiped out long ago, and just the traces of it were left, and so they knew where to build the foundations. Just the fact that catacombs and subterranean kind of like layers exist is almost proof that they at one point knew that they needed to go into mountains in order to make things for survival. So how many floods, how many catastrophes had happened before that, like maybe even fires, they went in there to prevent fires, so they'd lined it all with stone or something, fire couldn't get in, cut the oxygen out, I don't know. But Either way, they built these, you know, there are these certain things that stayed. Maybe they're from the same era. Whoever was clearly mastering this stonework knew what they were doing, and they had some form of machinery. You cannot do this with human and animal work. This is just too much building, too much quarrying, cutting. It takes a superior uh, machinery or some, a superior race of beings. And who knows, but I mean, it seems like back in like 40 BC, like things were happening and like, it's like the population estimates that we have in history are probably pretty wrong because you never know how many times the population has built up to even the way it is now and then crushed down. We have no way of really knowing that, how many times that's happened throughout the history of our planet or world or earth or whatever we're on. I don't really know. But it is something amazing and the, these architects and artists and masters of this work in the past are just showing us something that leads to our potential being greater than it is today. And nowadays we're having machines do all this work for us and we don't really do that much. We're losing basic skills at a rapid rate and we can't let that happen. And this is just some cool artwork. This is a cool lion exploding and this was the, so was the subterranean layers, the catacombs. I love that. There's just like, what is this telling? What is this showing here? It's a whole nother world underneath the regular surface level. And maybe that's symbolic and metaphoric too. Maybe the underground layers were seen to represent the subconscious and then people going in there were different types of people living in more in the subconscious spiritual realm. Maybe the hallucinogens were making them see things and even the, just a little pollutant on the bread can make people hallucinate. Whatever the cause, our ancient ancestors believed in a magical and exponentially beautifully divine world. And whether they were seeing these things in their minds or in reality, these people and beings were interacting with them and existing with them is is up for debate but there is a lot to tell from the artwork and you know these fireplaces like what were they for that clearly is an ether a heating device and I believe that you know maybe lightning would strike the um, the top of the building it would penetrate energy all the way throughout the house all the way through a system of copper or gold which would cause that those two little things to have an amazing beam of energy between them and maybe a dial could turn it up and down you control the heat all over the place because fire was not what these fireplaces things were for they were for something so different and here's just another little there's some telescopes and meridian calculators or something that existed in these times I just thought they were kind of interesting and wanted to throw them in a lot of mystery in Lyon what a beautiful place I'd love to visit in fact, the whole universe we live on is such a beautifully astounding place that I want to go everywhere, and I hope everyone is encouraged to do so as well. And all these videos aren't meant to serve as just facts with me slamming you with stuff and enforcing that you believe in it. It's really just to open people's minds and enhance creativity and really 
thought expression because by closing ourselves off to firmly believe in one thing that can never be proven just really limits ourselves and our potential and our imagination in a way that it really shouldn't and I believe people should express their imagination and their creative expressions in order to try and solve some of the mysteries that may never be able to be solved because just of their nature as being complete enigmas since the dawn of time. There's a lot of things we can theorize about and nobody should be harshing on anyone else for believing a particular thing. But we should be all open to seeing what the potential really could be and trying to think outside the box and maybe trying to discover something that's been suppressed because I feel like we can push the limits of uh, our human understanding of our past and our history and there's a lot to really discover and understand. So. Bless you all on your quests and uh, talk to you soon.